Hello everyone and welcome to another first impressions video. My name is Brett Day, I'm the gear editor with the Fablographer and today I am joined by our editor-in-chief Chris, Chris Gampert who has had his hands on the brand new Sony 50mm f1.2 G Master. It's a lens, there it is, it's a beauty. It's a lens we've been incredibly excited about since we learned about it and like I say Chris has had a chance to play around with it so Chris what can you tell us about this lens so far? So first off, I'm going to answer the burning question that everyone has. How big is it compared to the Canon 50mm f1.2? Mm -hmm. Luckily, I own that. Here's the Canon 50mm f1.2 on the EOS R5, and here it is on the Sony a7R4. And you can sort of tell, Sony seems a tad bigger, but they're roughly around the same size when considered like the diameter and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So it's pretty uh, incredible that Sony was able to do this. Now, yeah, for sure. This is a Sony G Master lens. Mm -hmm. One thing that's a little weird is you have two of these buttons here and you have one here. And that's to cater to the fact that like sometimes you'll be shooting vertically like this. Mm -hmm. And then other than that, ergonomically speaking, this feels nice in the hand. Personally though, I like the feel of the Canon a little bit more. And that's gotcha. a little weird for me because I like smaller glass. Mm -hmm. But there's something about this where I'm just like, it doesn't really feel plasticky, uh, plasticky bad that is, but it, I mean, right. it feels a little more plastic than the Canon. So you the also Canon have, feels yeah, a bit more premium then? Yes, absolutely. Okay. You also have the aperture ring and you can set that to A if you want, so that way you can control everything via the camera. Mm -hmm. Build quality wise, it's G Master, so it's weather sealed. Um, I haven't taken it out into the rain or the snow because New York hasn't really had any. Right. But I would trust this lens is very good, and I think that you're going to get the best weather sealing overall on Sony's latest generation of cameras, minus the A7C. Correct, right. Then in terms of autofocus, so this thing has overall held up. There are weird performance issues that I saw with strong mm. backlighting and this lens, though, in terms of, like, face detection and eye detection and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but in the most controlled lighting situations, it's still pretty good. However, you know, and you've been finding this as well, too, there's still a slight edge from Canon. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely with the eye detect and the face detect and just focus overall. Yep. Yeah, so that was sort of blowing my mind. Then what you also have to remember with this is... You know, you have to remember to switch the face and eye detection from animal mode to human mode. Most yep. people will probably have it in human mode, but for some odd reason, I switched it back to animal. I think it was trying to photograph birds or something like that. Mm -hmm. But you have to keep that in mind with these. And no matter what, you're going to get great image quality. The image quality from this lens is exceptionally good especially from a Sony lens. I mean, Sony's lenses are very good, but I've always mm -hmm. felt like they add like some more clarity or some contrast or like they sometimes feel a little too sharpened. And I mean, that's the problem with the camera, I feel, more than the lenses. Yeah. The Comparatively speaking, I like the render of the Canon lens more. Mm -hmm. um, it feels a little bit more film-like, a little bit more organic. This feels very incredibly digital. But it's still very nice, and you know, if you don't mind going into post production, then you'll be fine. Gotcha. That's a shame. I was hoping there'd be a little bit more character with it. No, unfortunately not. Mm -hmm. I mean, the lens that has character is the 3514G Master. Mm -hmm. You know, now that you're saying that, that's a great point. This lens can flare. Gotcha. Which okay. is weird for a Sony, and we haven't yeah. seen that in a while but it's still incredibly well-controlled flare. And that's what I've been finding. Either way, I mean, it's a solid lens. I like it. I think it's around $2,200. We're still trying to figure that out. Mm -hmm. But I think it's overall a very good lens. A good lens for Sony's first 1.2 primer. Probably a good starting point for them. Hopefully they can build on it going forward. Yeah. Um, you know, some people were wondering, like, hey, how is this going to do versus the 55 1.8? Much shallower depth of field. The sharpness, I feel, is a little bit more there. And mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it's bigger. So, you've got that. Well, there it is. Fantastic. Well, it sounds like a pretty good start. We're looking forward to seeing what else you can do with it while you've got it in for review. 
But there you have it, guys. There is Sony's brand new 50 millimeter f1.2 G Master um, with Chris's first impressions. So keep an eye out for our full review, which will be coming on the Fablographer soon. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone.